Excellence is mundane. Excellence is in the tiny things. Excellence is in waking up 50 minutes earlier than the day before. Excellence is changing our habits one at a time. Excellence are the times when we are working every day in small incremental steps to reach our goals. But what do we do when these goals seem to be moving further and further away and our steps feel heavier until we are unable to lift our feet? Usually in these moments we try to speed up, wake up earlier, push more, feel the morning on our faces. However, if the original drive is missing, the final push may stop us altogether. So hi, I'm Schloss Vasse, second year PhD student in computational neuroscience. And in this video, I really want to talk about the topic motivation and how we kind of lose and get our motivation to achieve excellent performance. And for me, motivation is really this feeling that I want to push forward and achieve my goals without any stress or strenuous activity that is needed for requiring these goals. So motivation is almost this feeling of effortlessness. And if you are also struggling with focus and motivation, but you really want to achieve your goals, I think this video could really help you as I will discuss three topics or three methods that I always use to get through these periods and really help me achieve the goals that I want to achieve. But lately for me, focus and motivation has been far and few in between. And I think that is partly to do to this phenomenon called the second year slump. So the second year slump is the time during the middle of your PhD or a big project when you feel Feel like you have lost your way. It's a time where most students have a massive crisis of confidence both linked to their own skills and whether they can ever complete their project, but also linked to the project itself and whether it even has any value. It's a pretty dark and lonely time where everything feels really hard and is very isolating. And this is by girly microbiologist. And I think the biggest contributor to this type of second year slump or this type of feeling is because in general, our progress is not linear. So it's not that if we take one step in the right direction, we will necessarily reach our goal faster. It could be that this step is to the left, to the right, or even a step backwards. And before we make this step, we don't really know if it will bring us to the goal that we want to reach. So the first thing I want to talk about are keystone habits and changing your keystone habits. So in general, there are many books about habits. There's tiny habits, atomic habits, the power of habits bits amongst others and I personally love all of these books but today I really want to dive into one main topic and that's keystone habits. So keystone habits are usually habits that trigger other processes to follow up from these keystone habits. So if you do these keystone habits the other things that you have to do to reach your goal feel a lot easier and feel a lot smoother. So what I've noticed that usually when we want to try to reach a goal and get there as fast as possible we try to really really adjust our behavior pretty drastically, but usually these drastic changes are not that sustainable. So for example, if you have a big exam coming up, a drastic change would be like, I'm gonna study every day for 10 hours and I will do this for the next month such that I can get an A. And I think in general, this is not super sustainable. So a better way that for me really works is to look at my keystone habits and only change this or only do this in the day. So to identify your keystone habit, it is pretty easy. You just think about the goal that you want to achieve. So for example, for me right now, it's to write a paper or finish up a paper. And then you list down all the things that you have to do. So during the day, I would have to write for an hour, for example, make some code, look at the figures, etc. And then I think about all the habits that I could add to my life that could help me achieve this goal. So for example, that could be going to the uni in the morning or writing for an hour every day or every time I come home, program a little bit. And then I look at all these habits and this is really free flow. So put all the habits on there. And then I look at all these habits and I pick down the ones that for me are really the habits that will probably benefit me the most in achieving this goal. And these are done the habits that I'm going to focus on for the next few weeks to really solidify those in my daily life. So for example, right now, what I've noticed is if I go early in the morning to uni, my day feels a lot smoother and I get a lot more done. So this is for me a really a keystone habit. So the second thing that can help you if you lost your motivation is to really try to remember why you started. And for me, for my PhD, this sometimes helps a lot. And I try to list down, I have a notion page for all the reasons that I started my PhD. And then every time my PhD feels really hard or feels really against me, I go over this list and see if the things or the reasons why I started my PhD are still valid nowadays. So I think for me, 
the things that my PhD allow me to do is to really satisfy a part of me that's really curious. And this curiosity is something that I don't think I can explore in any other type of field except for research. And I have this really long list, but it's pretty personal of all the reasons why I'm doing my PhD. But in general, if you're working on a really difficult project, I would recommend to beforehand set up a list why you want to finish this project because there will be moments during your journey that you will lose motivation and during those periods looking at the reasons that you started this project in the first place or started this bachelor or started this PhD will really help you get over these little humps or losses of motivation. So the last thing I want to talk about if you're really fatigued and you have lost a lot of motivation it could be a period that you're really in need of deep relaxation and deep relaxation I kind of quantify as hobbies or projects that are outside of your work or outside of your main project that really give you energy. So this could be something really creative or this could be reading books because I think a lot of us that are scientists live with science on our mind 24 seven. However, if we look at the lives of many brilliant scientists, we see that they balance their work with other intellectual or creative pursuits. So for example, Einstein played the violin and from the age of 13, he was said to be a particular fan of Mozart's sonatas and he loved studying the compositions and I think you can see this actually with a lot of scientists that they don't only focus on science but they have a lot of other creative pursuits on the side that really for them spark curiosity and joy. So if you are a little bit unsure what for you sparks joy or creativity outside of your studies and or work, because sometimes we tend to forget these things. One really brilliant idea that I got from the book Second Brain is to ask your family and friends what you were obsessed with as a kid. Because usually what you were obsessed with as a kid is still something that's kind of inherent to you, that has an intrinsic motivation that isn't modeled by outside motivations. So I asked my mom in the weekend what I was really motivated by as a kid and she told me that I just really liked learning new things that were super random. So as a kid I was for example really obsessed with vegetables. I found vegetables really interesting and wanted to learn everything about it but this interest only lasted for about a month and then I became really interested in tennis. And then I again switched and I kind of still noticed this, that I really personally enjoy the beginning of a learning journey. I just find almost any kind of topic really interesting and fascinating. But if you ask your parents and or friends what you were obsessed with as a kid, it could be something really specific or it could be a general feeling. So yes, I hope you will find something that is outside of your work or outside of your main projects or interests that can kind of give you motivation in a field outside of your studies. Because I think sometimes if we find something outside of our studies that we really enjoy, that usually sparks a curiosity or a creativity back into our own work. So I hope you enjoyed this really short video and that you learned something and otherwise see you next week. Bye!